The word creepy can be difficult to define. Like, what makes someone creepy as opposed to outright threatening or unpleasant? Yet, even though it's difficult to define, the sense of being creeped out someone is universal. We all know what that feels like. Women, in particular, are sensitive to creepy behavior and creepy men. But despite its prevalence in the human experience, there's been almost zero scientific research into finding out objectively what constitutes creepy behavior. It seems subjective, what is creepy to one person might seem normal to another person, or perhaps it's only creepy if it's done by a certain individual. For example, if a really good looking guy was staring at a woman and then approached her and started flirting and making suggestive comments, it might be encouraged by the woman, very welcome behavior, but that exact same behavior if performed by an ugly man is gonna be considered creepy. So this whole concept of creepiness is extremely confusing, but there was a team of researchers who wanted to bring some objectivity to the concept. Their study was called On the Nature of Creepiness, and this study featured 1,341 participants from around the world. The study gave them hypothetical situations, posed various behaviors or attributes, and got the participants to rank them in order of least creepy to most creepy. In the end, after looking at all the data, they discovered the seven rules of creepiness, and we're gonna go through those seven rules in this video. But before we get to that, let's look at some of the other interesting findings from this study. The first thing is that men are much more likely to be considered creepy than women are by a factor of about 20. 95.3% of our respondents thought that creepy people were much more likely to be males than females. Another consistent finding was that people who are considered creepy are not socially clued in enough to be aware of how they're coming across to others. In response to the question, do most creepy people know that they're creepy? The responses were 8.6% yes, 59.4% no, and 32% unsure indicating that our participants did not believe that most creepy people know that they are creepy. Another interesting part of the research was that they isolated that one of the biggest contributing factors towards somebody being perceived as creepy is when people don't understand the motivations or intentions of that person. Believing that one understands the intentions of an individual makes them less creepy. This reminds me of the approach taken by dating coach James Tusk, who, whenever he approaches a woman, always starts with some variation of Excuse me, sorry to bother you, I know it's not normal to just start talking to strangers, but I saw you there, I wanted to chat to you, etc, etc, insert flirtatious banter. He says that it's really important from the outset to acknowledge that what you've done in breaking social norms and starting to speak to her is not normal. His reasoning is simple, because women are aware that that's not the normal behavior, and so if you just start hitting on them out of the blue, they're gonna be extremely concerned. Why is this guy talking to me? I'm totally freaking out. He's just broken a common convention of social behavior does he not understand social norms? Is a guy who's this out of touch with reality and what's appropriate potentially dangerous? It's these questions, it's the uncertainty and the ambiguity that creates the perception of creepiness. Reading directly from the study, consequently, the feeling of being creeped out is unpleasant. It would be considered rude and embarrassing to run away from an odd person who has done nothing overtly threatening. But on the other hand, it would be perilous to ignore your intuition and remain in an interaction that is dangerous. This ambivalence leaves you frozen in place, wallowing in unease. But using James Tusk's strategy, that counteracts this because he's openly acknowledged that what he's done is a bit weird. He demonstrates that he is aware of the social norms that he has just broken, and therefore he is not socially clueless. That puts the woman at ease and lessens the likelihood that she's going to perceive him as a creep. So back to the study. In one section, they had people rank 42 different traits or behaviors from a scale of very creepy to not creepy. Here are the top 15 creepiest attributes and behaviors. The numbers in the brackets are how far they deviated from the neutral number, three. They stood too close to your friend. They had greasy hair, a peculiar smile, bulging eyes, long fingers, unkempt hair, very pale skin, had bags under their eyes, they were dressed oddly, they licked their lips frequently, they were wearing dirty clothes, they laughed at unpredictable times, they made it nearly impossible for your friend to leave the conversation without appearing rude, and they relentlessly steered the conversation towards one topic. Those are the 15 creepiest behaviors and attributes. And you'll notice that a lot of them had to do with appearance. And I've spoken about this before, it's called the devil effect, that when we negatively perceive someone's appearance, we think that they're ugly, we're more likely to automatically assign other negative traits to that person. I think that this is very uncomfortable for society to acknowledge this because 
we like to pretend that every person is born equal, but I'm a biology guy and I think that we massively underestimate the importance of genetics. I think that there is a massive discrimination against ugly people, both men and women, and this list of creepy attributes that reinforces that. Those are just the 15 top scoring attributes. I'm going to show you the other 29 now and you can see where they all rank based on the number inside the bracket. Remember, neutral was three, so the higher the number, the creepier it is. So just take a moment, have a look there, scan to see if there's anything that you find interesting. For anyone who wants to do a deeper look into this table and in fact the whole study, I'll put a link in the description box below. You can check it out for yourself. As you can see, some of the other high scoring ones were watching someone, asking for pictures, steering the conversation towards sex. Too much interest in sex and sexual topics was actually frequently mentioned in the study as an indicator of creepiness. In fact, being a sex shop owner was listed as the third creepiest job that you can have. Here is a full list of professions ranked from creepiest to least creepy. As you can see, clown is the creepiest. There's no real surprises there. Uh, people are also creeped out by professions that have to do with death. So you can see taxidermist at the top there, along with funeral director. So just have a look at the list yourself, see if you can find your job. It's pretty interesting. I think obviously the biggest takeaway here is that if you don't want to be perceived as creepy, you need to become a meteorologist. It's such a weirdly specific profession for them to have tested for. So after collating all of the data, the researchers established the seven rules of creepiness, and we're going to go through them now. Number one, they make us fearful and anxious. That's pretty straightforward. It's just establishing that the common response to someone being creepy is anxiety. Number two, Creepiness resides in the individual more than in his or her behavior. In other words, behavior is more or less likely to be interpreted as creepy based on who's doing it. So certain actions, certain behaviors, if they're being done by some rich, good-looking, wealthy guy, is not that likely to be interpreted as being creepy. But if it's done by an ugly homeless man, well, God help you. Number three, we think they have a sexual interest in us. Women have to constantly be aware of the dangers of men forcing themselves on them. And evolution positively selected for this suspicious trait, for women to be constantly vigilant for this kind of danger. This is a difficult one for men to really relate to because it's not really that equivalent emotion. This is something that is unique to the female experience, this constant fear that men are potentially going to rape her. And it's not a recent phenomenon. This isn't the result of our modern culture. This is something that would have gone way back into caveman days because Think about it. The men at the bottom of the tribe, you know, the low quality men who couldn't attract a mate based on merits because they're not good enough. Well, they still have the same biological urges as every other man. And are they going to just accept their fate? Well, some of them might, but some of them might try and, you know, sneakily pass on their genes by if nobody's watching and have got the opportunity to overpower a woman, they'll just take what they want. It's awful. It's horrible. And we all 1000% condemn this, but it does happen. And women are aware inside their biology that this is a danger they need to be concerned about. And so it's really important for women to always be registering in their awareness which of the men around me show a sexual interest in me? Of course, if the attraction is mutual, you know, he's sexually attracted to me, I'm sexually attracted to him, there's no problem. But the danger comes when it's unrequited. And she thinks, okay, that guy over there is sexually interested in me. I need to be aware of that. Even if it's a small, minuscule chance, it's not something that a woman can safely ignore because the consequences of him forcing himself on her are just so terrible that she needs to be vigilant. That's where this perception of creepiness is useful. You know, when something just registers, ah, there's something slightly off here. You know, it's that thing telling you, pay attention. You know, something might be going on here. Number four, they are creepy when they exhibit multiple symptoms of creepiness rather than just one. In other words, it's difficult to say whether one specific behavior or attribute makes somebody creepy, but it's the combination, lots of them working together, that's more likely to contribute to that perception. Number five, the expected intimacy and frequency of interaction with the person moderates perceptions of creepiness. This one I find really, really interesting, and it reminds me of the advice that the pickup artists would give young guys back in the early 2000s when they'd say, 
If you go up to a girl in a club, always say to her, hey, I have to get back to my friends in just a minute, and then start talking to her. This was a conscious strategy, like a line that guys would use specifically to guard against the fear that women would have that he's gonna stick around and keep talking to her for too long. Without any reassurance that you'll be moving on to something else in a second, she's gonna get more and more unnerved the longer the conversation goes because she's thinking, what if this guy doesn't realize that socially it's inappropriate for him to continue talking to me? Am I going to be stuck with this guy for the rest of the night? Am I going to have to have an awkward interaction and like outright reject him? If she feels like she's going to be stuck with you, then whatever you do is more likely to be interpreted through the creepy lens. But if you assure her you're just chatting for a minute, then you've got to go move on to something else, then she's less likely to perceive your actions and behaviors as creepy. Number six, Creepy people are unable to change, but they do not necessarily have bad intentions. This one's really interesting because it shows that you can do harm in two completely different ways. You can consciously intend to do harm, but you can also accidentally do harm. A socially awkward person might have really positive intentions and want to do something nice for you, but in their awkwardness, they might inadvertently be harming you. They could be occupying your time or making you associate with them and everyone around them is going to perceive them to be uncool because they're talking with you. But it's interesting to register that having good intentions is not a protection against being perceived as being creepy. You can wish the best for everybody and only want good things for people. But if you're not reading the social cues correctly, you can still be creepy. Which brings us to our final rule, number seven. People who follow social rules of behavior are not perceived as creepy. That right there is your biggest protection against ever having that label creep applied to you. Understand what is socially appropriate, what are the social rules, and then follow them. Remember back in school when there was that one kid in the class who just didn't get it. They just never socially attuned to what was appropriate and it made them an outcast. Nobody wanted to spend time with that kid. You often find this with children who don't have any brothers and sisters because in their home life, they never really practiced socialization with other children and so they're not aware of what's socially appropriate or not. In my private consultations, whenever a guy asks me, how do I get a girlfriend? You know, they're not having any success in the dating market. One of the first questions I ask them is, what is your social circle like? How many male friends do you have? How many female friends do you have? It's really important because women will not tolerate a man who is socially awkward. And nobody's born with social skills. They are a practiced skill. You need to actually be spending time with women and with men and friends in order to be able to calibrate. Unfortunately, in this day and age, at this time in history, it has never been easier to be alone. The internet is amazing. It offers endless novelty. And so if you want to just accept your social anxiety and not do anything to change it and just stay indoors and never chat to anyone, it's never been easier to make that choice. But it's a terrible decision because social interactions are inevitable and they're essential in order to practice the skills necessary to have a successful romantic relationship. You don't want that feeling that when you're in a social situation, everybody can perceive that there's something off about you. And you're aware that people are noticing this about you, but you don't know what it is. You don't want that feeling. That feeling that other people are creeped out by you is going to be devastating for your self-esteem. There might be a couple of people out there who are genuine extroverts and just love socialization. But for most people, socializing and spending time with people involves a certain degree of awkwardness and anxiety. But there's really no choice here, especially if you're a young guy. You can't just not do that. You have to push through the discomfort. Show some Courage, show some masculinity. Yes, it's it's hard, but you've got to learn this stuff. Watch, observe, learn, practice all of these social skills until you're comfortable that you know what's appropriate and that your behavior isn't creepy to anybody. And remember, the most important thing of all is to become a meteorologist. Is there a limit to the human potential? Should you be worried about hypergamy? And how do you get over the disadvantage of being short? All these topics and many more are covered in exclusive videos available on my Patreon page. This includes my latest video, Women Who Choose To Not Have Children. In this video, I explain why my personal views are a little bit controversial and why they've gotten me in trouble in the past. I talk about the biological instincts for reproduction and to what degree humans can be considered an exception to the rest of nature. I talk about the best reasons to not have children and when the transition to wanting children is most likely to occur, as well as what it reveals about a woman's character when she says that she doesn't want children and the various motivations that she could have for that decision and what you need to take into account when listening to that. A woman's decision to have or 
or not have children is massive and a lot can be learned from that. So if you're curious to know what red flags you can spot in that conversation, I highly recommend you check out this video. For every video that I post here on YouTube, I post an additional bonus video on my Patreon page. That means that at the moment, you're only seeing half of the total content that I create. If you would like access to the other half, then please go and sign up at my Patreon. It's just a $5 a month subscription and you get instant access to a whole bunch of exclusive content. It's a wonderful way to support the channel and I would love to see you over there.